The Samsung Galaxy S24 series have slight differences between their versions across the world, and processing may be done by Qualcomm's made Snapdragon or Samsung's made Exynos SoCs. If you wonder which one offers the better photo and video quality given the same camera hardware, I already have the answers for you. Let's dive into it! So, a full disclosure at the start. This video is not sponsored by the Samsung's Exynos development division nor Samsung's Snapdragon development division. I'm saying this because every single time I make one of those comparison videos, there would be people blaming me that I'm biased. Well, I'm not. So, in here we have Galaxy S24 with Exynos system on a chip inside, something that you can buy in the European region, in South Korea, India, some Asian countries and so on. Whereas this here is S24 Plus with a Snapdragon inside, something that you can buy in the United States, in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan and so on. And based on many reviews and my own experience, we can say that there are certain advantages owning a Snapdragon when it comes to battery life and overall performance and thermal performance and so on. The big question is whether it really matters when it comes to camera performance. These two smartphones have absolutely identical hardware camera setup. The big question is whether the post-processing made by the SoC makes any difference. We're gonna find out soon enough. Main cameras, daytime photo, and I've intentionally picked a cloudy day because texturing the white areas appears to be really challenging to be reproduced. The photo taken with the Exynos-backed model appears a bit warmer, kind of in line with the SoC's thermal performance. Unlike processors, most people kind of prefer slightly warmer colors. Zoom in and here's something interesting. A bit more details and better colors are available on the left. And despite the slightly greater amount of noise, I think the Korean-made chipset performs better this far. The second example confirms what we just noticed. Somehow, the photo taken by the Exynos-powered S24 has more life inside it. Colors are vibrant, dynamic range seems to be tad better, even texture feels better. Another zoom in doesn't show much of a change. Amount of details is about the same, with the Exynos-made photo offering slightly more vibrant colors. All of this makes me really curious about the low-light photography. And, well, this time it feels as if we have absolutely identical photos. Colors, sharpness, exposure… it's a match. Even if we dig deeper and analyze the photos zoomed in, there's literally no difference. Video quality shows a different picture, though. Again, it's tad warmer on the left, with image stabilization which looks a little better on the Exynos side. Less details, apparently there's been more aggressive denoising applied. I prefer less grain and vote for the video on the left, but feel free to let me know which is your preference in the comments below. And concerning the main camera performance, Samsung seem to have done really great by tuning their own system on a chip. Let's go now ultra-wide, sky's the limit, or in this case, the benchmark. Notice the amount of texture on the left and on the right before I zoom in, because this is a huge difference. I mean, it feels as if there's lack of focus on the left side, which is the Exynos-backed S24. The softness is notable only when you zoom in a lot, though, but it's definitely something to be concerned about. Sure, the colors are once again paler on the right, but overall image quality is superior. It is exactly the same condition with low-light photos as if the image on the left is washed out. And again, this only occurs when I zoom in three or four times in post-production and won't be notable on social media, not even if you cast the photo on a big screen. But certainly gives us reasons to pay even more attention to the video performance. Not that we should expect something revolutionary. I mean, what we see here just confirms the observations that the Snapdragon system on a chip and the Sony-made image sensor in the ultra-wide camera setup come along really better. As if they belong together. With exception for the colors. Because once again, I visually prefer the color science on the left. It's a lot more the Samsung way. Call it color pop, over pumped, over saturated, or whatever, but most people would prefer this kind of look on social media. Shall we go now for an optical triple zoom? 
because the so-called telephoto cameras are doing exactly this. You can get much closer to objects that are far away from you, and despite the modest pixel count, this camera is capable of recording 4K video as well. Photos come first, though, and we seem to have the opposite to the previous round behavior. Sharper and slightly more detailed on the left, while the Snapdragon Edition is once again going for washed-out colors. Less sharpness, too. Well, this would be my favorite, if I pick the winner based on my professional-oriented requirements, but since what matters here is the perception that most people have about photos, it's no secret that everybody would like to enjoy bright and vivid photos, and definitely the one on the left is closer to this maxima. Video performance is even more intriguing. Yeah, daytime performance appears kind of similar with both, and image stabilization being a bit more optimal on the left, Bitrate is almost identical and far away from perfect for both sides, but well usable footage, especially if you have steadier hands. Low light scenarios show a much different picture though. The Snapdragon processed footage is quite rubbish compared to the Exynos, with such amounts of jitter that kind of make you feel dizzy. Less noise, less grain, more texture, somewhat better dynamic range, and the Exynos nails it when it comes to the telephoto camera processing. Selfie cameras, which show rather comparable performance, artifacts are less on the left, but the image appears too warm in some cases. You can have up to 4K video resolution recordings with each of these phones. Concerning portrait photography, it's actually the round which I approached with not too high expectations from the Exynos back model, but I was apparently wrong, and you see, low expectations are usually the right kind of setting because it's almost impossible to get disappointed. S24 series are among the champions when it comes to portraits, and I feel that we have a parity in this round. In the end, honestly, I didn't see this coming. Yes, that's, that's a win for the Galaxy S24 Exynos back series, and at the beginning, when I was starting working on this video, I was absolutely sure it's gonna be the Snapdragon all the way, but obviously when we have a Samsung made image sensor combined with a Samsung made system on a chip, it would perform slightly better in terms of processing your photos and videos. That kind of makes good sense because it's all in-house made and maybe Samsung know a bit tricks in order to extract slightly better video or photo quality. And that's quite a serious relief because at the moment we kind of have parity. You know, the Snapdragon Edition is maybe a bit faster, maybe a bit better in terms of battery life and thermal performance, whereas the Exynos wins when it comes to the overall camera performance. And now, now I can sleep fine. Now I'm curious to hear about your opinion. The comments are down below. Let me know, how do you feel? Do you prefer the Exynos processed photos and videos or the Snapdragon backed S24 outputs. Well, it's been quite fun and very unexpected, and I hope you have learned something new, or at least you kind of satisfied your curiosity. If that's the case, I feel that this video deserves a like, subscribe to the channel for more cool tech inspections, and I, Michael, can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!